What I've got here today is a Kodak Retina 3S and um, I've been sent this one to use for parts or repair uh, as you'd expect it has a few issues so I'm just going to have a quick look over it and see what I can identify and one of the first things I notice is that the leatherette is sitting odd here you can see a crease right along where the front panel fixed is to the body it's obviously sitting high the name plate here is missing at the top of the camera the plastic surround on the meter dial is cracked and raised in the center there's quite a pronounced scratch on that top cover um, I don't know if that would affect anything just looks a little bit unsightly frame counter was just on number one so I'll just shutter winds and fires so it's good and what else? Well, what about this? The whole front section there is coming away from the body. So something is loose in there. With the Retina 3S, it's not uncommon for the screws that hold the shutter mechanism to the front mounting plate to be loose in this case they're very loose possibly even missing it's got a pronounced rattle so there's a loose screw in there somewhere can I tell anything else well the exposure meter the movement appears to be jammed the follower needle you can see down towards the front there, the yellow follower needle perhaps. Yep. And then at about this point you see the white needle for the meter itself, for the movement, and that's just stuck there. It's not returning to a zero point, it's not moving with the light, it's just stuck. So that suggests that there's some serious issue with the movement in the meter. And looking through the finder, what can I see? Well, I can see that the vertical alignment is very off. And the horizontal alignment is well off as well. It's missing the leather patch from the base of the winder but that was with the camera, it was loose with a stop from getting away with a piece of sticky tape and the camera comes with a 50mm f2.8 Zenar lens the focus is a little bit stiff, it's nothing unusual it certainly seems to work well enough the aperture settings and the depth of field pointers all appear to work so that certainly needs to be cleaned and um, serviced but otherwise it appears to be fine so it appears I'll have my work cut out for me looking at the top of the shutter here there are quite a few marks, dirty looking marks also along underneath the window here you can see some marks I don't know whether someone has attempted to glue that front, front uh, back in place it's almost like red paint at that point or whether they've used um, some sticky tape to try and hold it all together 
certainly there's a lot of marks here on the top of the shutter housing at that point. I don't know whether that's glue from sticky tape that will clean away or not. I'll discover that in due course, no doubt. So this will be my next project and I want to turn this back into a good working example. Um, I'm not very pleased about the scratch on the top cover. I don't know, I don't think I can really do anything about that. Um, so that might just have to stay exactly as it is. But I will make it back into a good working example of the Retina 3S. And um, probably can go to a new home shortly after that because I think I've got three 3S cameras myself and I don't think I can justify keeping a fourth one. I'll start removing the top cover, I think, see what I discover. Open the back of the camera, put something through the fork of the rewind, spin the rewind knob off. Ah, very unusually, there were four washers sitting underneath that knob. Normally something like that is put there to adjust the height so that the knob doesn't rub on the top of the camera. I notice that there doesn't appear to be any useful detent on that rewind so there's something odd going on there. Um, that's certainly something unusual and unexpected. One screw at the end of the top cover Two screws on the top cover at the rewind end. Looking at the top cover at the rewind end here, you can see there's a circular dent or crease through there. That's where the camera has been dropped on its head and the knob has driven down into that top cover. So I lift off that top cover. Lift off the meter setting button. And it's return spring. There's nothing particularly unusual about the meter to see. I don't think I can remove the top cover of this without um, removing the cord and all of the rest of it. So that can remain where it is for the moment. I'll have to see how I get on. I'll start stripping off the components from the top of the camera. When the top of the camera is stripped, I'll start work on the base of the camera. Now that screw is quite loose on the rangefinder, as was its mate. I'll take the rewind bush off the top of the camera and I want to inspect that because there's something odd about this. I can feel the detent there now. I couldn't feel it before. Interesting. I'll take off the shutter release button. I can lift off the meter, unhook it, and take the meter coupling cord off the drum.
pop the body to one side for a minute. I want to look at this meter. Interestingly, right here on the top of that post, which has the little pulleys on it for the cord, there's either corrosion or rust or some spot there showing that there's something odd going on there. Whether it's been re-riveted, I don't know. I'm going to take the top cover off this meter. And see if I can see. Oh, it's missing the screw at this side. Now, missing the screw at that side is probably a sign that someone has already been in before. And I can inspect this movement. Now, the movement is obviously stuck, it's not zeroing. Typically, that happens if the movement is off its pivots. The hairspring is present. The needle is certainly pressed down hard against this plate here, and that's why it's not moving. But I can't immediately tell whether the movement is off its pivots. I'm going to lift that needle slightly. That is that certainly where our friction currently is. Right, the needle's not touching anything now, but it's still tight. It doesn't want to swing. Suggests to me that the movement is off its pivots. It looks appropriate at the top of the meter. I'm going to have to take this out of its case and check. And unless the movement swings freely, I can't really electrically check it to see if the movement is lively or not. Right. I'll need to undo these two screws. That screw was loose. It's not very uncommon for screws to be loose in cameras. That screw likewise was not tight. But where screws are loose, it always leads you to suspect that they've been loosened by someone. There should be a solder joint here, and of course there's a solder joint there. I'll go and desolder those spots. Alright, I have the movement out. And I'm going to inspect it. And looking from the top, or looking from the bottom, I can immediately see that the movement is off the centre of its of the armature there in the centre. So it's off its pivots and with a bit of luck I'll be able to get it back on there and with even more luck it will be electrically useful. So I'll just peel back this tab slightly 
I need to get at the screw here which controls the pivot. You screw that screw in, that's tight. It's sealed up with lacquer which tells me that no one has been playing with that. I'm just going to take a little bit of acetone, spot it onto that lacquered screw and hopefully that screw will move. What I hope to do is to back the pivots off so that the armature is loose, lift the movement back onto the pivot and then tighten the pivots back out until the movement is nice and secure and uh, not flopping about. That's the idea. I'll stick that to that pair of pliers because it makes a handy way of holding this in place. Just turn that about half a turn and have a look. I'm checking to see if I can see the pivot sitting in the jewel in the centre and I can see that it's not there. The uh, It's not sitting correctly. So I've got to try and lift it into place. Now I'm not going to use a metal tool because it's e too easy to damage the movement. I'm going to try and lift this with a toothpick. No, it won't lift over. I'll back the jewel off a bit more, the pivots. That's it. Now I'll do the pivot back up. Now, now I'm off the other side. Well, it's just floating around now.
Alright, have I had any success? Well that's looking useful. The needle is swinging correctly. I'm trying to get an indication of whether I've tightened the pivot back up far enough. I think that's slightly loose. If you tighten them up too much, of course, the movement will bind. If it's not tight enough, the movement will dip up and down. It'll rattle. That looks pretty good. I can see I've got a bit of high contrast here I need to deal with. I'll pull that blind. So, the movement swings back to the zero position smoothly. I'm going to test this now electrically and see if that movement jumps when I touch it with a low voltage input. For this purpose I'm using a multimeter and I've got it set to the uh, continuity range and I'm going to touch the two contacts and see if the needle swings. It does. Alright, that's all I need to do. That tells me that the movement is alive and I just hopefully only need to solder it back to the selenium cell and the meter will be good to go. It's also possible of course that the selenium cell is failing and I won't get a proper response but we'll deal with that problem as I get to it. So there's our movement, here's our case with the selenium cell in it and I now need to put the movement back in, remake my connections and then test the meter back to the soldering station. Well we have the motor, the exposure meters connected back up to its selenium cell and as you can see, as I cover and uncover the selenium cell, the movement is lively and looking good. So I think I can uh, claim a success for that repair. Now I'll need to put the cover back on, but I'll also have to change the shape of the needle slightly because I bent it up when I was trying to make sure it wouldn't scrape on the case. Now of course it sits too high and will very likely foul the follower needle inside the case. that should do. I'm going to try that and see how I get on. Of course I've got to find a replacement screw. Here yeah, you can see the follower needle is fouling the meter needle there. So the needle is too high. I'll be doing a little bit delicate work with tweezers I think. And you will never see that because I won't be able to get it, keep it all on camera. But um, it's all looking positive so far back shortly. Alright, I've uh, found another screw for this case. I've managed to get the needle to sit down 
low and flat enough that it no longer fouls to follow a needle. Now the zero adjustment screw needs to drop back in. It's got a pin on the back, fits into the slot in the arm for the adjuster. Our case drops on the top. I'm checking that it's settled in place. I'll run the original screw back in at that point to keep it in place. And on this side, the screw was missing. And so I have a replacement. These screws are very tiny. Certainly a sub-millimeter I'd say. So they're a bugger to get started. Yeah, that one's started. Now I'm checking that the follower needle clears the meter needle at all points across the range and it certainly appears to be the case. So the meter is now good to go. It's ready to go back in the camera when I get to the stage where I'm rebuilding it. One of the interesting things about this meter that I noticed as I had the case off, you'll notice that there's a little metal rivet here. Now that's been melted into the case to replace the moulded plastic post which is used to locate the meter firmly in position at this point on the body top of the camera. Very very commonly that plastic rivet is sheared off. It really doesn't create a lot of difficulty. Um, I certainly wouldn't have bothered to go to extremes like putting that uh, metal post there to replace it. I would simply have left it out. So the meter's done. So far so good. What about the rest of this? Well, I'll take this strap lug off at this end of the body and now we're delving into the deeply dirty greasy stuff. I'm going to put down a piece of uh, paper to work on.